Do you have some kind of a tree that you want to kill? Follow along as we talk through different ways you can do it. Some might ask, why would you kill a tree? And particularly me, James, the guy who grows seedlings like I did in this video up here and plants trees for the next generation. Well, there's lots of reasons. Now, first, you may have a tree that has grown up voluntarily like I do with this mulberry behind me. It's adjacent to my house. It's a nuisance species that I don't want and I want to deal with it before it gets really big and becomes much more of a hassle. Or maybe you just got done cutting down a tree. You're not gonna grind the stump out, but you wanna make sure that that tree doesn't re-sprout. Or possibly you're like me, trying to do a timber stand improvement project, and you wanna take out some selective trees and make sure that they don't re-sprout, whether you wanna cut them down or not. Regardless of why you're trying to kill a tree, the premise of doing it is the same. As a tree grows, it generates a large root structure underground. And the purpose of the root structure is to grab moisture and pull it up into the tree for it to grow. Now, also, the other purpose of that root structure is to store energy. So if you think about the dormancy cycle of a tree, during the summer, it's growing, it has leaves. Those leaves use photosynthesis to gather energy from the sunlight, which gets transferred down to the root system. That root system is like a big battery. It stores all that energy. So as the trees go dormant in the fall, Next spring, all that energy is going to come up, let the tree re-sprout. So when you cut down a tree, whether it's small or large, there is some level, maybe a lot, of energy stored in those roots. So effectively what you're trying to do with any tree killing is send some type of chemical down into the root structure to kill it, even though it has lots of energy, to prevent it from re-sprouting. Now you might ask, James, can I not just cut the tree down and make it die? And the answer is no, very rarely can you do that. That root energy is going to re-sprout and it does it in one of two ways, depending on the species of trees. It's either going to do a stump sprouting like this oak behind me. You can see where there's shoots that are coming up. This tree had died up above, and down below, you can see it's re-sprouting on the stump. The other type is what we call a root sprouting tree. I don't have any examples to show, but a good one would be a willow tree. So if and when you cut it down and you don't kill that root structure and energy, it will re-sprout all over the place in that vicinity where those roots are out. So you'll start to see all kinds of shoots start to come up through the ground. So by now, hopefully you understand regardless of why you're trying to kill the tree or whether you're trying to kill it after cutting it down or while it's standing, you are gonna to have to use some kind of a chemical on most situations or that tree is going to re-sprout. Let's talk through a few different things you'll find relative to the chemicals you can use and options that are out there for any homeowner as well as how to apply them. Now, as you walk into a store and you're trying to decide a chemical to use, look past any marketing on any label such as this that tells you it's gonna kill a stump or a vine. They all will do the same thing if the active ingredients are what you need. So you'll find that whether you're using a bottle like this or you're like me and you have larger jugs because you're doing large scale stuff like timber stand improvement on my farm, the active ingredients is what you're looking for. Now the active ingredients you're gonna normally see in some kind of a tree killer is glyphosate, commonly referred to as Roundup. This is a generic version, 41% glyphosate. Another product is referred to as Remedy Ultra, which you can see here the active ingredient is trichlorophyll, which I probably said that wrong. For an exact example, this bottle of stump and vine killer is exactly that. It's the active ingredient from Remedy Ultra, but at a usable percentage of concentration to an end user. You might also see ready to use products that have 2,4-D as an active ingredient. Or a final one that I don't have here, but is very common is referred to as Tordon, which has an active ingredient of Picloram. And a very common one is called Tordon RTU or ready to use, which is a great product. All you have to do is read the instructions fly in my face. Most people get scared when using chemicals, but the reality is all you have to do is read the instructions or the label. So even if you're at the store and you pick this bottle up and you say, will this do what I need it to do? On the back, there's going to be an openable label, if that's a word, and you'll be able to see what plants is this going to control, what species, it'll talk through how do you apply it. All the things you need to know are always on the the label that's on the product, whether it's a big commercial jug 
or whether it's a ready to use or RTU product like this one. So just like school, follow the instructions. When I'm on my farm doing timber stand improvements and having to kill lots of trees, I will take some of these larger jugs like glyphosate and I'll mix it up in a larger volume. I typically will put in a product like this. Uh, it's made by laser. It's a blue spray pattern indicator. So it makes my fluid blue and just makes it easier to tell where have I sprayed because there's no sense in wasting extra product if all you have to do is kill a certain area, which I'll show you next. Now, going back to that Tordon RTU or ready to use, one of the things I really love about that product, and I've used it many, many, many times, is it does have blue dye integrated into it. So as a ready to use product for an end user, you can see where you're spraying, it's very clear, it's in a concentration that will kill trees and roots, and it does a very, very good job. Now for some of these ready to use products, you can even buy them from Amazon. I'll throw some links down below so that you can review them and see what they are and the things that I use. But many of these you can also pick up at your local stores, whether it's a home improvement store or some kind of a farm and ranch store. Now an important final point about using any chemical is typically you have to get it on a growing point to make it actually work. Why is that important? A product like Roundup, I can't just go spray on the bark and have it work effectively. It has to get on a growing point, which would be something like the leaves, which how am I gonna do that on an entire tree? Or the growing point that's on the trunk of the tree, which is actually only on the very outer edge of any tree. Now there are some products like that Remedy Ultra, which again came in this small ready to use bottle, that can be applied in what they call a basal application. And basal meaning you actually can coat the trunk of the tree and it will absorb into that growth layer beneath and it will go down into the root structure and kill that tree. Let's go kill some trees. I had to get my camera helper, Wyatt, because we're gonna go down there, cut those down and it's steep and I need some help. Ready to go off road? Mm -hmm. So this little one, simple, we're just gonna cut that one down and we're gonna treat it with our chemical. Now with this one, I'm gonna show you a second technique called chop and fill, because you may have a tree that you either can't cut down or don't want to physically cut down because of where it's at. You can actually chop into the bark and apply the same type of chemical that'll get drawn down and kill that tree. We're just gonna cut it down. Now, when you cut a tree down, you've just like on your skin have created a sore and that sore after probably about 30 minutes is going to start to heal itself over. So you don't wanna cut a tree and then come back hours later and try to treat it. It's going to have scabbed over effectively. So while it's exposed is when you need to treat it. Now, even with a little tree like this, it's important to understand that what's actually growing is the very outer ring of the tree. There's multiple different layers on the outside, the phloem, the cambium, and a couple others I can't remember off the top of my head, but that outer edge is the growth part. So even when you cut down a large tree, you don't need to treat the whole stump, you just treat the outer edge. So in our case, we're taking our chemical with our little applicator. It's so small, we're just gonna cover the whole thing, but realize that it's just the outer edge that you need to treat. Now that other method, the chop and fill, the reason you might use that, if you have a tree that's growing that's larger than what your cutting mechanism is, I can't get this one cut. It's another way you can still kill it, but not cut it down. So I'm gonna take my little hatchet, or even if you had something like a cutter like this, I can take and create a little notch right there that exposes that skin. Now with our hatchet, we're simply gonna do that, that. I'm gonna come around on multiple sides that chemical is going to sit in those little pockets right in that growth ring and it's going to kill that tree. We just found a woolly worm. <laughs> now what happens if you have a larger tree? So again, we could use our chop and fill method where we just come around the tree and chop on the outside. Try to not cut it all the way out because you want to be able to let that chemical sit inside that cavity. Now you don't have to go all the way around, but the more of those chops you put in with chemical, the more exposure you're gonna get. So in my case, I just use my little spray gun and you can see with having that blue, I know exactly where I've sprayed and I don't over apply. Now, when you have a larger tree, you can do the chop and fill method, but frankly, I like to use a chainsaw because it's easier. 
If I'm going to leave this tree standing, I'm just going to go and make a ring around the exterior that again is only about a quarter of an inch deep at maximum because you're just trying to get into that growth layer on the outside. <laughs> So you can see we're just barely into that growth layer. Now what we would do is take our sprayer and just give a quick little application. I've cut this exact style of tree down, a cherry tree before, where I cut it off right here, sprayed the top. I came back, I don't know, maybe two, three months later, and I was gonna cut it down to the ground at that point in time. And I was able to see that blue on the outer ring all the way down at the base of the tree. That tree is always transferring food down, particularly later in the season like this in fall, where it's trying to pull all that last energy down into the roots before it goes into its dormancy. That's one of the best times to kill a tree. So there you have it. That's how you can kill a tree. You can cut it and treat the outer ring. You can chop and fill or with the right chemical product, you can do a basal application. Again, just read the label, that's what it's all about. Again, I'll throw down in the links below some of the simple ready to use solutions that you can order even directly from Amazon. Again, Tordon RTU or ready to use is one of the best. Very effective, it's blue, you can see where it's at. Now remember, even though we're killing trees in this video, a tree planted today can be enjoyed by somebody 20 years from today. So go check out my other video we did, Wyatt and I, about growing trees from acorns that you can plant in your home or anywhere else. Thanks for watching. Stay curious, friends.